Hi, it's Greg Hurrell with another VIM screencast. Um, and this one is going to be about sorting groups of lines. Uh, and just to be clear what I mean by that, I'm not talking about taking a bunch of lines and then sorting each individual line within the group. Um, rather, I'm talking about taking a file which is divided into chunks and moving the chunks around and keeping the chunks together. Um, and I'm going to do that by recreating a commit from the other day that I made uh, where I had to do this kind of sorting and it is complicated technique so it's quite possible that I'll make a bunch of mistakes but hopefully we'll learn some things along the way um, so the first thing I'm going to do is find the commit so I can show you what I did yeah that's the one um, so I'm going to show you what I did uh, and you'll notice I didn't use git show I used git diff uh, the reason is because I don't want you to see the commit message. And the reason I don't want you to see the commit message is the commit message explains what I did. And I want the screencast to explain what I did. Uh, but basically you can see I've got this file here with kind of stanzas of multiple lines and I want to sort them according to this name key here. And uh, it's somewhat complicated because as I said, multiple lines are involved in each group. Uh, but not only that, the groups are not homogenous. So some of them have a comment preceding them, um, which means that the key that I want to sort on isn't even the first line in the group. So it's a little bit challenging. Um, so we're going to see how I made it happen. And, oops, here we go. Um, now, if, actually, that's not what I wanted to check out. I want to check out what it looked like before I made the change. So let's go find the file. So this is what the file used to look like. Um, now, as you know, in Vim, it's pretty straightforward to sort things. You just select a range, you do colon, you type sort, and you're done. Um, but as you can see, if you try that technique on groups of lines, it's not going to work too well. Uh, so what we really need to do is take these groups of lines and turn them into single lines. Now, one way to do that would be to just join with uh, Shift J there. And you can see that if I run sort now, I get everything sorted by that first key, which is what I wanted. Uh, however, I have to manually go through and re-break the lines again. And I, right now, I can't even remember where I, where I joined them. And so that would be a very error-prone manual process. Uh, so what we really need to do is instead of just join, we need to join but insert a marker so I could put like some unique sequence like three at symbols and know that once I've done the sorting I could just turn all those sequences back into line breaks and then the file will be um, sorted and the blocks will be preserved so let's have a look at uh, one way of doing that um, so I'm trying to grab a bunch here um, so one way of doing that is with the uh, g command so what G does is it runs something globally throughout a range of lines. Um, and specifically, you provided a pattern saying how you want to select the lines on which to operate. Um, and then you provide a command to run on all of those selections. So in this case, uh, what we want is a, we want to find lines that start with hyphen name. And for all of those, we want to run a substitution command where we're going to take new lines and turn them into at symbols. Uh, and if so if I run that, you'll see that all of those got converted. Um, and now I can sort these. Um, and then I can turn the at symbols back to new lines. So for that one, I'm just going to use a normal substitute command. Um, I'm going to find those three and put them back where they were. I can put some separated lines in here. And now that's sorted. It probably already was, to be honest. I didn't even check. But basically, I was able to run the sort command and then return the groups back to the, the shape that they had before. Um, you'll notice that when I did that substitute command, I didn't type backslash n for new line. That doesn't work in replacement patterns. Uh, backslash r would work. Um, and what I actually did was control v and then Enter, which allows me to put in a literal key code, um, which shows up on the screen as caret n. It's a new line. Um, so that's how we could handle that case. Uh, but it still hasn't. It still doesn't help us with that case where we have comments. So let's have a look at some of these. 
the way we're going to deal with this, um, we actually want to put take the comment and put it on the end. Um, and then we can join our lines again and unjoin them and then take the comment and stick it back at the top. Um, and of course, along the way, we'll do the sort. So the way I'm going to do that is with a macro. Um, so let's let's start recording a macro. I'm going to hit QQ to record a macro. I'm going to search for the um, whatever that thing's called, pound symbol. Um, and I'm going to do DD to delete the line, right curly to jump down to the next blank line, shift P to paste above. And at that point, I finished the macro, so I hit Q. Um, if I want to rerun the macro, I just do at Q, and you'll see that it did it again. Um, if I'm feeling bold, I can provide a number, like I can do, say, three of them, three at Q, and it did three. I also have a binding that reruns the last macro. I think I've talked about this in some other screencast, but basically return will do that for me. So if it return, it'll rerun the last macro. Um, I happen to know that if I keep running this macro all the way around to the bottom of the file, it's gonna loop around and it's gonna end up mangling a comment. So let's just keep going until that happens. There you go, um, we're at the bottom of the file now and then it mangled a comment. So I'm gonna stop running it now. I'm gonna undo that last change. And you'll also notice it screwed up at the end here. It didn't put it where I want. So I'm gonna move it there where I want. Um, and now let's go to the top of the file and then jump down again to the last. So this is the range of those like special comments, uh, special stanzas with comments. Um, so I'm gonna run that G command again, but I'm gonna make it slightly different this time um, because what I wanna do is start my selection at the lines with dash name. And I want to stop it at the lines that have a comment. Uh, and I want to do a substitution much like I did before. I'm going to take new lines and turn them into these triple at sequences. Um, this time I'm adding a G flag because I need to do it multiple times. Um, joining once is not enough. So I'm going to run that uh, and You'll notice I've got some funky highlighting going on, so I'm going to turn that off. And I'm also going to turn off wrapping because it's really hard to see. Uh, but you can see there that we wound up with some redraw issues, but it does work. Um, all these lines are now, as you would want, uh, wrapped onto a single line or condensed onto a single line, and I can now run sort on them. So now all we have to do is undo the fake joining that I did. So we're gonna once again use a simple substitute command for that. We're gonna get three apostrophes. Um, and this time, just to show that it works, I'm gonna use backslash R to get the new line. I'm gonna do it globally and it didn't work because I'm gonna control C out of that. Um, it didn't work possibly because I had the very magic. Yeah. So a very magic makes the at symbol have special meaning and we don't want it to have special meaning. I could have also escaped it, but whatever, I'm gonna run it. Um, and that put everything back onto multiple lines. And so now all I have to do is take these last tested things and put them where they were before. So for that, I'm gonna record another macro. So again, QQ to record a macro, uh, search for uh, comments, which is hash symbols at the start of the line, DD to delete, left curly to jump up to the previous blank space, P to paste, Q to stop recording a macro, enter to repeat it. It's not finding it. What did I do wrong there? Let me try recording it again. So QQ to record a macro, find lines starting with hash, delete them, jump up, paste, stop recording the macro. Repeat the macro, repeat the macro, repeat it 20 times. Hit enter to show that it works. Almost at the bottom of the file. Went too fast, so that's it. So I think I've done it there. Um, so that's basically how I did it. Um, or some set of techniques like that. I can't remember the actual details. Um, let's get out of there and put things back the way they were. Because I made a bit of a bit of a mess there. So now everything is back the way it was, um, and now I'm I am going to show you uh, the commit 
so you can see what I really did and if I remembered it correctly. But yeah, basically collapsing lines, moving comments below, and collapsing the ones with comments, then selecting everything, and then putting it all back. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty much what I showed. So how long did that take me to do? Uh, so it probably took me like seven minutes. I mean, you you just saw me do it, right? So I guess we'll find out how long it took me. Um, and the question is, is the automation that I enjoyed from doing it that way uh, an advantage? Uh, would it have been faster for me to just manually edit all of these lines and sort them? Uh, probably the optimal thing would have been to not be OCD about it and just let them be unsorted. Uh, but I wanted them to be sorted because this is a file that I have to maintain and whenever I add a new setting to it, I have to make an arbitrary decision about where to put it and I always have to double check if it's in there already so I have to search. So I figured it would just be nice if I sorted it. So having made the decision that I wanted it to be sorted, um, my intuition is that the price of automation was worth it. Um, because to do it, to have done it manually would have been error prone. I probably would have made a mistake. Um, and this is a technique that the more you use it, the better you get and uh, it becomes quicker and you're less likely to make mistakes. So a couple of other scenarios in which you might want to use this are doing things like, um, or, or related techniques for doing things like sorting CSS selectors. You have to be careful about that because of precedence. But nevertheless, you might want to sort groups um, or sorting functions within a file or member functions within a class, things like that. Um, so that has been uh, sorting multiple lines. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope it was useful. And I'll be back again soon with another Vim screencast.